Hello chess friends, welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you the most exciting game from the US Championships played between Ray Robson and Jeffrey Chung. And you will learn a lot, but most importantly, you're also going to enjoy uh, a fantastic concept, a beautiful king side attack, nicely prepared, nicely built up with very thematical attacking ideas like uh, bringing your pieces to the right place, uh, pawn sacrifices, peace sacrifices with a king hunt, leading to checkmate. So this is all what you get to see just in one game. And I ask you for please making me a favor by becoming a member of this community. Please subscribe to the channel as I promise to show you much more interesting uh, videos like, uh, like this. Let's have a look. Ray Robson plays with white, goes for e4, e5, knight f3. And knight of six. We have the solid petrol for opening. It's one of the most reliable openings at the very top. And I imagine that you uh, don't like facing it. But look at this game. You get a weapon. You may use yourself against this opening. You can take the pawn on uh, e5, obviously. But Robson plays the move d4. So he wants to open the center as quickly as possible to generate some active uh, peace play. Knight takes e4. And before capturing the pawn, the bishop comes to d3, attacking the knight. Black wants to establish that knight in the center, supports it with the move d5. Knight takes e5, so once again we have a symmetrical position, but don't worry, after knight d7, well the main move is knight takes d7, exchanging some pieces, but Robson played the move castling kingside, and that's a nice move, you're just continue developing, and after knight takes e5, d takes e5, we see there's an imbalance uh, in the pawn structure, white has a nice advanced uh, pawn, and after the move knight to c5, Intending to take the bishop, well, there are various uh, ways of playing here. You may move your bishop yourself back to e2, but there's no need to. Let's just play as active as possible. So Robson played the move bishop e3, putting a bit of pressure there. Black goes bishop e7, so, well, the knight is still protected. But the idea behind white's uh, setup is to launch the f-pawn. So here you can see the kingside majority is coming, and um, if white were allowed to play. He would like to play the move f5 and these two pawns they can cause a lot of damage on uh, on the king side. Knight takes d3 so black finally takes that uh, bishop, queen recaptures and black having the bishop pair is now intending to establish a nice blockade on the light square so for the moment the pawns on e5 and f4 they have been stopped they cannot really come forward it will just be taken so white needs to find a plan to uh, generate these uh, pawn pushes, to renew the threat. And you do that by means of the move knight c3, attacking the pawn on uh, d5 twice with the queen and knight, c6 is played, and now the knight comes over to e2 with a plan going to g3, so that from g3 you're controlling the f5 square and maybe the move f5 can uh, can be played at some point. But there are various options. We don't have to go in detail. Bishop f5 has been seen, but after the queen goes away uh, by, for instance, to b3 to attack the pawn, black is going to uh, stop that pawn, protect it, and then the knight will come to g3 anyway. And then you have this plan of ruining black's uh, pawn structure by taking on f5, and if you have to take back with the g-pawn, that doesn't look uh, so great. So bishop f5 has been seen in a few games. The other main move here is to castle kingside and now the knight comes to g3 and you see that there are three pieces ready to support the advance of the f-pawn. f5 is in the air and therefore bishop h4 is played with the idea that the knight on g3 can be eliminated anytime soon but the bishop comes in to c5 to attack the rook on uh, f8. So the rook goes to e8. And uh, well, this is an interesting theoretical position uh, in which various moves have been tried, including a logical move like rook a e1, bringing the final piece into the, into the game. But Ray Robson comes up with a very interesting novelty. And uh, well, you will... Um, you may guess the move here yourself. It is a kind of move you would have expected not to be playable right now. But... He goes for the move f5 anyway. So uh, white is just very close in opening up the f-file for the rook. And that's uh, looking incredibly dangerous. Just a 
couple of moves. Uh, just to illustrate why it's attacking uh, ideas here. If you take on f5, you take with a knight, and after g takes, queen takes, black's king is open, you're threatening to take on f7, the rook will come, and uh, the other rook will come there. So that's just a free attack. You cannot permit that as, uh, as black. If you take on g3 instead, you take back with the queen, and the pawn on f5 can still not be taken because of rook takes f5, the pawn on g6 is pinned, so that loses a piece. So you can't do that. Uh, what should black do then instead? Well, of course, one of the main drawbacks of playing f5 so early is that the pawn on e5 can be taken. So black just captures a pawn, but after f takes g6, h takes g6, black is a pawn up, but the f file is open. The bishop first goes back to d4 to see what is black intending to do with, uh, with that rook. And well, maybe black's position is still playable, but I imagine that from a practical perspective, this is not a lot of fun to uh, to play as black, as so many white pieces are directed at the uh, at the black king. I think that Jeffrey Chung made um, maybe not the most precise move, but he played a very logical move as. He went for the move rook e8, while the engines are saying that the rook is much better placed on e6, probably to guard the uh, the sixth rank. Maybe the bishop can come back to f6 to initiate the exchange of uh, bishops uh, very soon, so the rook supports it together with the queen. But who is going to place his rook on e6? You want to get out your pieces as quickly as possible. This bishop on c8 doesn't have an active square to go to. Anyway, rook e8 is played, and now the main moment, the key move of this game, rook takes f7. Beautiful rook sacrifice, which is so thematical. After king takes f7, there's not much else you can do. Rook comes to f1. And uh, now the black king is wide open. It cannot come back to g8 because it allows queen takes g6 with checkmate. The black king is just completely exposed. Is there anything else you can do? Well, you can block with your bishop, but after taking on f6, you grab the material. Now it's a queen versus two rooks, but this king is uh, wide open. And uh, with a move like a queen d4, and very soon after king f7, queen f4, another check, king g7, you bring up the pawn to h4. There are very difficult moments ahead here for uh, for black. And um, once again, it's very understandable that uh, Xiong doesn't go for that line with bishop f6. Instead, he decided to run away with the king to the center. That seems very understandable. But there is this move, queen takes g6, threatening checkmate on f7. That is the main problem here. And black got to find a way to deal with it. And here again, if you not able to calculate all the lines. It's very understandable what Jeffrey Xiong did here. He played the move bishop e6 to get the bishop into defense to cover the f7 square and the king can even try to escape via the d6 square as the bishop interferes along the sixth rank. Very logical move but it's the decisive mistake. Black should have played here an insane looking move. King d7. It feels like the king is not able to run away um, efficiently, it's it's blocking the path of the bishop, but after something like rook f7, you block with your rook on e7, that is the main idea. Now after queen f5 check, you cannot go back to e8, that is checkmate on f8, nice mating pattern, queen and rook, but you can go queen c7, and after queen to f4, well, don't play this move, uh, queen d6, because it allows bishop e5, and the, the queen is pinned as well as the, the rook on e7. So here you're winning material as, uh, as white, but you can play the move king d7. And remember that white is a rook down, so he doesn't have anything better than just settle for a draw here with his uh, repetition of, uh, of moves. Well, difficult to calculate and it feels absolutely scary. Maybe there was something within this line which uh, Jeffrey Xiong didn't uh, fancy uh, at all. Back to the game. He played the move bishop uh, e6, and now it was queen g7 with check. The king goes to d6, bishop e5, check. So the king has to go to c5, and now it's bishop to d4 again. Look, the king is very exposed, doesn't have much support from any other pieces. 
If the king goes, let's say to b4, it's queen takes b7 with check, you can't do that. In case you go to c4, then there's also queen takes b7. And despite being a rook down uh, and you're not giving a check, there is no way to find a, a shelter for the, for the king. Um, as you're about to go queen b3 or maybe even play queen takes c6 and it will be made soon. If you do take the bishop here, it's queen b4 check for instance. And if you go to e5, it's queen f4 with checkmate as the rook protects the queen. So anyway, black seeing this move bishop d4 thinks, hey, I can go back with uh, the king to d6. And after bishop e5, king to c5, there's a repetition of moves then. Of course, as white, you, you see such a king, you're starting to look for more. And the move, the key move to keep the game going here is bishop c7. You're attacking the queen. Fantastic idea. And now, for instance, this was not played in the game. If the queen goes away, offering the exchange of, uh, of queens, the idea is that now the bishop is no longer on e5. The queen can come back to c3. And after king b5... You sacrifice your pawn on a4, and wherever the king goes, if you take the pawn on a4, it's queen a5 with checkmate. Beautiful cooperation of queen and bishop. The alternative is to go king a6, but then it's also queen a5 with checkmate. So we see the idea behind this move, bishop c7. You're attacking the queen, and you're threatening queen to c3. Now, the only move here is bishop to f6 to interfere on this diagonal, preventing the uh, queen from coming to c3. And of course, if you take the queen, black does the same and you are material down. So you can't do that. Rook takes f6 was played. And at least now the move queen, c queen to c3 is not really possible. So black has, to, has some time to try to set up a defense. Well, here again, if you play queen e7, offering the exchange of queens and even the bishop is hanging, I'm pretty sure that Robson was planning to go rook f7. This is a beautiful line, was not played in the game, this move queen e7. But it's basically the same idea. After bishop takes rook, queen c3, king b5, a4, and if you go king a6, it's queen a5 again. It's the same mating principle once again. So, black played here the move rook to g8. So this is a different way of challenging the queen. Very interesting. And now you're looking, what should I do with my queen and the, the bishop? If I move the queen, the bishop can just be taken. If the bishop can be taken, then the king can also come back. But as a rule of thumb, in attacking positions, especially with such vulnerable king, look at forcing moves. And the move played, this must have been missed by... Uh, by black in this game. It's the move knight to e4 check, guys. Look, if you take that knight, it's rook check again. So you're clearing the path for your queen with tempo. That is the main idea. After bishop takes, it's queen c3. And if you go king to d5, it's queen e5, king c4, b3. Everything comes with tempo. And after king b4, it's queen a5 with checkmate. Absolutely brilliant. So the knight cannot be taken. King b5 was played in the game. But now another tempo. You go for the move a4 with check. And the idea is that if the pawn would be taken, it's knight c3 check. And if the king goes to b4, then you give a check with your rook on f4. And this looks like it's leading to checkmate in one or two moves. Um, for instance, if you, um, if you block now, with, uh, with a pawn, so that after taking it, you can even play bishop c4. But the, the easiest move here is queen e5. To move the queen away from the threat, you keep the bishop defended. Uh, the white is threatening to take the queen, of course. The d pawn is pinned, so this is crushing. And uh, of course, there are also ideas to go uh, queen a5 or take on d4. This is leading to checkmate very, very soon. So after a4, black got to find something else. I should mention that king a6, it's not a safe square for the king. It runs into knight c5. So also the knight and bishop and pawn are able to create a beautiful mating pattern. Instead, they follow the move king to b4. But then it's queen h6. Beautiful idea so that you're leaving the bishop unprotected. Here, black resigned because if you take the bishop, 
The idea is that the queen slide over to d2 with check. If you play king to c4, it's queen c3 with checkmate. Um, you cannot go to any of uh, these squares on the fifth rank. So the only other move is king takes a4. But now the knight comes back to c3 with check. The only two squares are b4 and a5. If you go to a5 or a or to b4, there is knight takes d5 with check, discover check. So if black goes away with the king, there's at least knight takes c7 and it's uh, it's game over. So I thought this was a very spectacular game after queen h6, as I said, Jeffrey Xiong resigned. And well, keep in mind, sometimes the attack is simple. You, you advance your pawns, you make sure your pieces are behind these pawns and then you're ready to strike. And don't be afraid to sacrifice a pawn and such sacrifices, they are a natural uh, product of uh, building up your position in such an uh, effective way. So keep that in mind. Brilliant attacking game by Ray Robson. Click to the subscribe button and I appreciate your support. See you soon again. Bye bye.